If you just started making dioramas, you're about to be ahead of the game. I'm going to share five mistakes I made as a beginner so you don't have to. Number five, using the wrong tools. For the longest time, I really didn't use the right diorama tools. And what I really mean by that was using a sharp or newly sharpened blade and a T-square. Using those things really improved my dios. Okay, it's demonstration time. This is some XPS foam, and I'm going to show you guys what happens when you try to cut it with some, a knife that is not sharp. And we're going to do the same test with a regular ruler that's not a T-square to see if we can cut a straight line. Okay, so what you're seeing here is some fraying right here and right here. Now, this is not that bad, but it can get a lot worse than this. And if you do this, then you have to go in and try to perfect that by either using another knife or sanding this down. And you, and you really don't want that. That's not, that's not what you want to do, especially if you're doing commissions for people. Now, by way of comparison, this is a brand new box cutter, a cheap box cutter, and the Amazon affiliate links for these are going to be in the description as well. And here's my T-square. So the advantage to using a T-square is that I know if this factory edge is straight and I butt this up against that factory edge, I know that this is perpendicular and therefore this line is going to be straight. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this with the new knife and you can see the difference there's no fraying whatsoever on this and you've got a nice smooth surface that you can either glue or install a magnet into or anything like that so that's really what you want to go for number four using xps foam for everything i don't know why but when i first started making dios i thought that everything needed to be made out of foam with a few exceptions like windows obviously not but that really held me back in my diorama making because i wasn't using things like chipboard styrene 3d printed parts all these other things that can really enhance a diorama here's an example of what I mean these are both supposed to be diorama trees obviously this one looks a little better than this one this was XPS foam and clearly I didn't paint it but was it worthy of paint and this one is made out of paper towel rolls hot glue tin foil and some acrylic paints so you can see you know this was about two three years ago I tried this and this was a lot more recent. Number three, using weak or bad magnets. When I first started making dioramas, I was using the wrong magnets. I was using these kind of magnets from Walmart. These can be found in the craft section, but they're really kind of weak and they're difficult to determine the polarity on. I since switched over to these and pro magnets, which you can get on Amazon, and I have an Amazon affiliate link for these in the description of the video. And I'm gonna take a closer look and show you why these are so much better. Okay, so I have a couple of these older magnets that I would use in Walmart, and, and you guys aren't gonna be able to get a sense for this, but these are kinda light. Like, you can, you can very easily manipulate these. And so, what I used to do, you can kinda test these, so this seems like the polarity is correct. But I used to have, well, and so does this. So this is the part that's confusing and why I don't like using these anymore. Sometimes you feel like you have good connectivity, but you really don't. And when you actually install these, see, there you go. This is the side that's rejecting each other into the diorama. It becomes a problem after they're already embedded in the foam. Then you got to try to dig them out and... They're honestly not as strong as you want them to be to begin with, so you end up having to use more of these to secure a diorama wall, let's say, into a base piece. So that's that's not ideal. And then, you know, we have these Ampro magnets that I was telling you about, and these are on Amazon. I'll just open these up really quick so you guys can just see the difference, and you'll be able to tell right away. 
First of all, these are way heavier. There's a lot more to these. Much more sturdy than these Walmart ones. The next thing I want to note is just the polarity on these is very easy to tell because one side of the magnet has a dot and one side doesn't have a dot. So the side without the dot connects to the side with the dot. And if you try to put the two dotted sides together, good luck. It doesn't it doesn't work. You got to really push. So that's how you know. The other component to this is these are a lot stronger than the magnets I was just showing you. They're a lot stronger. So they're more durable. I've had no problems using these and I highly recommend them. Number two, overusing techniques. When I first started making dials, I got extremely comfortable with dry brushing and I started overusing the technique. It actually caused me some problems. You can watch a video on that right over here. But honestly, guys, I really feel like dry brushing held me back because I was dry brushing everything. I wasn't just doing it when I wanted to age something or add dirt or grime. I was just base coating everything in black and dry brushing it, which I was comfortable with. And that prevented me from starting on things like washes and airbrushing, which have really unlocked, I think, a lot of potential in my art ability. And so I would encourage you not to get too comfortable with one specific technique and branch out and at least try other things. Do test pieces with them. Find out if you like them and then that will help you inform how you paint things or how you do things going forward. Number one, comparing to others. The number one mistake that I think everyone needs to avoid that's a beginner diorama artist is comparing yourself to established artists. Don't do that. It's not fair to yourself. If you are looking at someone's artwork, like for me, when I was starting out, I was inspired by Al Figures, Lawless Studios, Oilers Workshop, all of those guys are great at what they do, but they had been doing it for years and years more than what I was as a beginner. And so it's not a fair comparison. What I did do and found success with was deciding to look at my dioramas and say to myself, you have to get 1% better than you were on your last project. And if you can do that every single time, you're going to do great. And not necessarily worrying about if my stuff was as good as other people's because that is not a really good mental place to be in and it's honestly not a goal that's easy to accomplish those people are already ahead of you because they have more experience and they're continually getting better so you need to just focus on if you are getting better than you were on your last project and if you do that i think you're going to be in a really good spot Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got some value from it. If you did, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below letting me know if you think I missed any tips that you think beginners need to know. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next episode. Vasco Toys. Action figure, dioramas, and props.